So, yeah. so this Higgs particle, just give us like a minute on the Higgs particle and the Higgs field, and then I'll put a back at, uh, come through the back door into that question. So the, the Higgs particle, it was theorized actually back in the 1960s. Uh, it's a remarkable story because it was a, a mathematical way of giving the fundamental building blocks of the universe mass. So for the electron, for example, or, or the quarks that build up protons and neutrons. So at a fundamental level, it was difficult to write down mathematical equations that describe nature as we see it without doing something rather clever. You can't just you can't just stick the masses of the particles in. And remember the mass of the electron was it was, it was known since 1897 or something. So, so we you know we know this thing has mass. But it was very difficult. Wait, wait, but Brian, wait, wait, just a moment. It, it's it's already a, a big step to think to ourselves that the mass comes from something, right? The, isn't just the mass a property of matter? And now you're telling me it's not a property of matter, it's a property of something else handed to the matter. Yeah, it comes in, in, in this picture, which, is, as you said, has now been shown to be correct, right, because we discovered the Higgs particle. Um, the, the, the mass, at the most fundamental level, comes from the interaction of these things, these particles, with the Higgs field. We call it a field, so you can imagine it as something that fills the universe. Um, and uh, so, it, I mean, you, you get mass from all sorts of things. So, so most of the mass actually doesn't come from that. Most of it just comes from, it's, it's really through Einstein's equation equals mc squared. So you can, so energy equals mass and mass equals energy. And so, so you can get um, mass by just things sticking together. So most of the mass of the proton, for example, is a, which is one of the building blocks of the nucleus, comes from the quarks sticking together inside the proton. But at the most fundamental level, yes, the particles, the building blocks like quarks and electrons have mass, and that comes from their interaction with the Higgs field. It, it, there's, a, there's a kind of picture that people use, which is one of those where it's a bit hand wavy, but it's a reasonable picture. It's, it, it's, you imagine pulling something through you know, what do you call it, treacle or syrup? I never know which way to call it in the US. Is it treacle? Do you have that stuff? Uh, maple syrup, syrup. yeah. Maple syrup. Oh. <laughs> uh, maybe, but, yeah, I was going to say, cool. uh, that nobody I'm, has ever said, would you care for some pancakes and treacle? <laughs> treacle, I have no I idea what nothing. that is. When, when I, everyone will know, but I've been giving these talks around the country, these, these lectures, uh, and I, I know things like, I know that the... Um, an object the mass of the sun, if you squash it down to three kilometers in radius, then you get a, a black hole. Right? It's called the Schwarzschild radius. I, I don't really know it in miles, and so I have to multiply everything by 0 0.6 in my head. So I know all these Dude, numbers. Dude, you guys yeah. handed us yeah, miles. Your, all right, don't take, don't start putting blame I'm, on us. That came from your people, I'm, your your kindred souls of generations gone by. And then you try to confuse uh, us uh, later on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. anyway. Um, <laughs> so, so you, if you if you have something moves through maple syrup, then um, it it sort of slows down. It acquires a a, a kind of momentum like quality to it, and and that's one of the ways that people describe the Higgs field. It's not the the best description, but it, what we're saying is that we now know that at the most fundamental level, the little points, the smallest particles we know of, acquire mass through an interaction with this thing called the Higgs field. And the point is that it, it 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 wasn't doing that very early on in the history of the universe. And as the universe cooled down uh, just after the Big Bang, then the Higgs field kind of flipped, and and, and, and this property of it switched on. Oh. And that's um, that's so things acquire mass. Okay, so is it possible? Uh, could something happen in the universe? Getting back to the person's question, could something happen in the universe where the Higgs field malfunctions? and the masses get confused and earth dies <laughs> somewhere in there yeah. there was the well, end of the earth multiple earth times that. earth's gonna die before that could possibly happen right so you can relax <laughs> you're gonna die <laughs> relax for other yeah, reasons. Exactly. You die for so 10, 10 other reasons and there you go jennifer the take up smoking take <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but even the solar system is going to be a real mess right but before <laughs> the sun's gonna as you know, it's going to, when's it, you know, it's going to start swelling up in about a billion years, isn't it? And then I think, you know, ultimately it'll be a red giant, it'll be a mess. I don't think it will quite engulf you. Not quite, but it'll totally, uh, uh, it'll totally torch us. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, half the, of the, the horizon will be the sun when it rises. Just imagine that, right? That's how big it will be yeah. in the sky. Wow. And yeah, yeah. As the oceans come to a boil and they evaporate and you lose the atmosphere. So yeah, and I, we're putting it at about six billion, five to six billion years. But 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 getting back to this person's point, is there a scenario where the end of the Earth would come about from for some particle physics reason rather than from an astrophysical reason? I know I, is the, the basic answer. We, the, the thing to say about the Higgs field, so you can picture it as a kind of a valley. Imagine, imagine a high valley and then a lower valley. So if you had a, a little something rolling around in a valley that was high up and it rolled around in just the right way, it could flip, flip out of that valley, roll down the hill into the lower valley. Uh, and the Higgs field um, looks a bit like that. Um, so over very, 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 very immensely long times, it is possible, yes, that the Higgs field will change character, will, will change. As it did and, in and the early would, universe, as it did in the early universe. And that would mm -hmm. change the laws of physics that we see. So it really would um, completely reconfigure um, the universe if that happened. Um, but we, so- And Chuck, and Chuck, one, Chuck, reconfigure is euphemism for completely destroy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right, Brian, in, in the hood, they say, let me reconfigure your face. <laughs> this is not... <laughs> and, actually, and, and it is interesting, actually, that, that the... Um, so there's another element to these predictions, which is called the top quark, which is the heaviest fundamental particle that we discovered. Uh, and and that ma the mass of that is, is intimately related to these sort of predictions. And, and they are kind of on the edge of stability. But I just want to reassure people, by edge of stability... People are talking about trillions of years. If you imagine the half-life of a radioactive atom, a nucleus, right? You know, the, the uranium or something, and it takes billions of years to, for half of these things to decay. It's like that. So, so you're talking trillions of years before you have a, a chance that this thing sort of reconfigures. That's basically the point. So it's not something that some people should worry about, which is why I say that, you know, uh, no, that's not going to destroy the Earth because it's not going to happen on timescales to that length. What's interesting to me, if in trillions of years, the universe reconfigures, it could reconfigure to a whole other uh, combination of laws of physics, right? Yeah, you're, you're saying things like um, you're changing the mass of the electron, for example. You might, the, the photon, particle light may not be massless. If you, if you change the character of the Higgs field, it could give light mass rather than the so-called W and Z bosons, which is to do with, if you're a student, you'll know radioactive beta decay. It's a, so to do then with light, light would have, light would be making a slep then <laughs> across the, a slep across the universe. If it wasn't massless, it, you know, by the time it get here, it'd be like, Jesus, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, it's, it's inconceivable. I mean, you, you don't really, you, you can't, we can't conceive of a universe with massive, where particles of light are massive and electrons are different mass. Right. You know, the, 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 the possibilities appear to be endless. Now, I should say this is right at the edge of our knowledge. So we don't, we don't really know, but it's interesting. But yes, the point is that basically we do have theoretical scenarios where the Higgs field can, can change and change character. And that would change the things that we call the laws of physics. Wow. And would have consequences vastly greater than just the destruction of the Earth. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, or rather, the reconfiguration. The reconfiguration. The reconfiguration. Let's look on the bright side. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, people. Earth is now going to be a, a vacation spot. <laughs> Reconfigure. For another yeah. dimension. <laughs> Rearrange the deck chairs. Right. Uh, we got to yeah. take a quick break oh. uh, when we come back. Yeah, I know. That went quickly. Oh, God. But, I, we, but we learned all about Higgs bosons and a little bit of the history of it. Uh, when we come back, more with my friend and colleague from across the pond, Brian Cox. So we'll be right back with Cosmic Queries. We're back. Cosmic Queries. Of course, I got Chuck Nice on this. That's right. And, uh, and I have to call him a special guest, Brian Cox. You know, we don't get him often. A friend and colleague and uh, a physicist extraordinaire. And, and Brian, it's just been a delight to have you uh, on this side of the, the ocean. And so thanks for uh, gracing us with your expertise and your charm and, and everything else that gets people excited about the universe. Now, we just spent the whole first of three segments talking about destroying Earth with the Higgs boson. Yeah. 
Uh, so, Brian, my favorite an an analog for the Higgs field, did I tell you this? It's, uh, when I, if, if I'm in L.A., I refer to a, the Higgs field is like a party field in Los Angeles. Okay? So, you, you go into a party, and nobody knows who you are, and you have to get to the bar, which is at the other side of the huge room. And you could just walk there and get there pretty quickly. But Beyonce enters... <laughs> <laughs> and people crowd around her, and she can mo only move much more slowly to the bar. So she has a much higher party mass than someone that nobody's ever heard of in Los Angeles. So yeah, is, that, is, that, really that, is that an exact yeah. mathematical analog? <laughs> to it's a really good analogy. I mean, it's, 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 that, it's the interaction that, that, that causes the mass. Co correct. And it's different from your molasses because your molasses – probably has sort of the same um, um, uh, f uh, formula for the force on it. I mean, maybe that's also true for the Higgs boson. I don't know. But the, the uh, what is it, the V squared uh, resistance to motion, you know, like air resistance, right? So, but here it's, it's in the party field, you're right. It, they're one-on-one -on -one interactions that completely define everything about it. And who gets to the bar faster? So B Beyonce never gets to the bar. Right. That's how that works. And that is, uh, that is why, based on my career, I am drunk. Because <laughs> you got to the bar like, real fast. I can't even get away from the bar. It's like I can't, couldn't get to the bar fast enough. <laughs> Who's that guy? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs>